so three weeks ago, uh, we actually returned to Manzanillo. And uh, since then, it seems like uh, forever since then. <laughs> but uh, we've been thinking almost nothing about anything else but the cruise, it seems. Um, uh, I've been writing progress reports and cruise reports and everything. And the one, the one thing that comes f f through loud and clear is that we've had a really successful cruise. And uh, it's from the scientists through the students and the person who ran our blog, Lisa Tassi, and who did our highlights video. And uh, we've been working on that highlights video. We have now the uh, proper credits so that we can actually display it uh, for just about anybody to see. And uh, really happy that uh, we're going to be able to send it around to all the participants because the earlier versions that we sent everybody was raving about. So that's going to be great. So in terms of the science, um, we went out looking for nanoparticles and the data we have on the cruise shows that the nanoparticles are of course there, but we won't know uh, some of the details that we would like until we get some of the samples back and can do uh, more of the chemical analyses in the laboratory, both chemical leach methods and um, uh, spectroscopy and electron microscopy methods. And um, that's going to take a long, long time. <laughs> <laughs> so for a three-week cruise, we've probably got two years' worth of data to start analyzing and writing up. But um, we had some really other big successes. We had several uh, uh, students on board the cruise. Two of them were undergraduates, Nicole Coffey and Ricky Rosas. They, everybody got dives, and uh, those two undergraduates did a spectacular job. And I encourage people to go to our blog and see the excitement that they generated both before and specifically after their, their dives. But they were just fantastic students. Uh, and the data that they, they, they actually generated with, with us probably will lead to them having a publication sometime after, after the next year or within the next year. And um, some of the data they generated, some people are going to want to write a new proposal to go back out. And uh, I saw Nicole yesterday after class, and she said she's ready. <laughs> so uh, it was just amazing to see the smiles of everybody coming back after their dives. And um, then the excitement of going in the lab to analyze the samples that they, that they, they, that they were able to collect. The, uh, the graduate students, uh, they were fantastic. We had people doing... Um, iron oxidizer work, um, uh, sulfide oxidizer work uh, in terms of the microbes. And then one of my former students, Mustafa Yusel, brought his student Batu along and uh, he, he was ready to do gen genomic work on the riftia and the mussels that we collected. So uh, that was very successful. Um, they've all written little reports and sent data and it's exciting to see uh, how well they're they're doing with this. So notice I'm trying to put the research and the and the, and, and, and the fun part together with the cruise because it's almost impossible to <laughs> to to, um, to to keep them separate. The students they uh, they were fantastic. We had a couple of postdocs uh, uh, with us, um, Emily and Vero and Oban, and all their work turned out real well. Um, and uh, we had uh, some former students of mine, Alyssa and, 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 and Mustafa, and they had a great time. We were getting wonderful data, and uh, we're just so excited about participating and seeing how the other students uh, were, were enjoying everything about the cruise, from the science to the, to the, to the food to you know, whatever seemed to happen. And then we had the old guys like myself. <laughs> Um, and uh, I had never been on cruises with a couple of them before, Tim and Eric in particular. Uh, and it was just wonderful to see uh, the fun that they had. Um, Eric had been in the Pisces sub that the University of Hawaii runs, but he's never been in the Alvin, so it was a special treat for him. And he was our rock hound, and he was giving, uh, we were collecting rocks and chimneys and everything. and. Everybody wanted a rock and a chimney, and he was great uh, being our curator of all the information and all our rocks and minerals. And so everybody went home with, with something that they can share, which is really a lot of fun. Um, the, um, 
the interesting thing is that we tried a couple of experiments um, with Tim that were really novel. We expected to find reactive oxygen species and hydrogen peroxide is one of them. And because of what's emanating from the hydrothermal vents, we expected that uh, these could form. The question was whether we could trap them. And Tim and one of our undergraduate students, Ricky Rosas, um, <laughs> played with a syringe sampler and they got great data showing that, that it formed. But then um, our other undergraduate student, Nicole, along with Vero, a post a postdoc, uh, showed that, hey, wait a second, we're getting um, uh, iron-3 and manganese-3 forming. Uh, and, and, and there's no way to form manganese-3 unless you have these reactive oxygen species, at least at the conditions that these um, waters are, are in, because usually it's a microbial intervention, but the microbes were not there, confirmed by my colleague Brad Tebow, who was also on the cruise. So I hope you get an idea that there was a lot of interaction and that the science didn't depend on one person. We all were collaborating and cooperating with each other, and so that's what made the story so much fun. Um, we had a total of 19 people on the cruise, uh, and uh, it was just a great grand old time for everybody getting the science and having the fun. It was really uh, good to see how the album pilots and the crew interacted with, with uh, our science party. And um, we had a post-cruise party in, in Manzanillo at one of the local hotels near the dock. And it was just one of the most relaxing times I think we, we've ever had. And everybody was just having a grand old time reminiscing about some of the wonderful things that, that happened on the cruise. And um, it's, it's, uh, I kind of feel like a daddy <laughs> because, uh, you know, as chief scientist, you're trying to oversee that everything's going well. And I would say that uh, it went it went really well, and I would say fairly smoothly. And uh, I just appreciate everybody that was on the cruise and all the work that they, they did. Uh, and there's much for them to do. And uh, one of the students, uh, Beverly Chu, who works with Clara Chan, she already has enough that she's putting a, a chapter in her master's degree that she defends in July, <laughs> just to show you how fast some of this data is going to be. Be looked at. So it's really an exciting time for the students after the cruise, but nothing could beat what, will we, what they did on the cruise because it's just one of the most interesting experiences in the world being able to go to, down in the deep sea submersible Alvin. Uh, it's just uh, it's a highlight of my career allowing and having the chance to ha have all these uh, unique individuals and students to my old friends and colleagues go down the Alvin and have a wonderful time. So with that, uh, I guess that's the end of our cruise. And we're just hoping for um, an opportunity to do it maybe one more time. <laughs> we'll see. But I know for the younger ones, they're going to have more opportunities. Uh, and um, Emily and Vero, they're already talking about working together and writing a proposal sometime down the line. And Tim's is too. So um, that's another thing that's good. We want to make sure we keep these... Uh, Alvin pilots and crew happy and that's one way to do it get good data publish good papers and then get new proposals <laughs> from those uh, data so that we can further the work and make oceanography and deep sea oceanography more fun for more people mm -hmm. including those that uh, uh, are the general public so with that goodbye and good luck